quiet, calculated, precise. Ask anyone at Cordesco's Chess Center and they'll tell you that chess takes practice, determination, and skill. And everyone has a different reason to compete in Broome County's third annual chess tournament. There are beautiful ideas involved, visually, um, calculating ideas. Um, when I say beautiful, it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's more than fun. It's rewarding. And there's a, s a social aspect to it also. The chess people are great. And others say... When you're a kid, between now thousands, we used to play thousands and thousands of games. Used to be a chess club at the YMCA downtown. It's fun because it's a challenge. But for Noah Drum, chess is a passion that he's had since he was five years old. You have to sit down and actually take the time to learn it. And once you play your first game, then you pretty much remember the rules. Yeah. But it's kind of hard because there's different moves you can do. Noah and Dan both agree that chess is a great thing for kids to learn. It's fun, it helps you think, and it gets you out of the house. You have to have skills in playing it. It's not something you just know because it's more constructive than just watching TV or playing video games. From its believed origins in the 6th century to practically being standard on most computers now, this mathematical game isn't just for pros. You have to have patience and discipline and really think your moves ahead of time and really see the consequences of your action. I think it's very uh, a very good activity for kids. And whether you know what castling is or not. This here? Yes. And then I can right this back. Chess is a game that both young and old can excel at. And Dan's dad says that he's already doing great. Those older brothers, watch out. Here he comes. 64 squares, 32 pieces, and lots of fun. In Binghamton, Elise McAlanis, YNN. Well, folks, another great tournament. The 2015 Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival. We can play it in Gibraltar. Unbelievable scenery. Gibraltar is an amazing place, amazing place. World-class player is one of the top-rated opens in the world. Carl Nakamura, the, uh, Topalov. Ex-world champion, Huey E. Fon, you name it, they're there. Oh, a whole lot of English players, you name it, they're all over the world. And they all come here to the Gibraltar once a year. For the Gibraltar Chess Festival 2015, from January 26th to February 15th, 2015, don't miss any of these great games. And here are the final standings in one of the coolest tournaments in the world, the Gibraltar Chess Festival 2015. Great, great tournament. You see all the players that come here. Players you don't get to see much, especially if you live in the States. Great talent coming up. Some old veterans, some young people. Oh, a lot. A lot of women. This is big on women. This because there's, there's women's prizes that are head and shoulders above almost anywhere else. In first place, my compadre and buddy from the United States. Carl Nakamura played a hell of a tournament and got his rating back number one in the U.S. I believe he might be at his highest rating ever for himself, ever, in his lifetime. Close second and played a hell of a tournament as well. David Howell from England with eight. Hui Fan, current women's world champion, tied for third. Now, Hui Fan also got quite a bit of prizes for the women's category. I believe she got over $20,000 in total this tournament. Not bad. Also with seven and a half, Vitigov, Topolov, Wagner, Owee, Adavan, Harry Krishna, Bachman, Malakoff. With seven, Peters Fiddler, who did pretty good considering he got a buy in one round. Also with seven, Yu, Yakovenko, Narditsky, Danny Narditsky, young American player, did very well with seven. Richard Rapport from Hungary with seven. Navate from Israel. Satovsky from Israel. Good showing by his Israelis. I believe it's pronounced Bok from Netherlands and Sepp Gupta from India with also seven. And there you have the top 20 finishers and one of the coolest tournaments in the world, the Gibraltar Chess Festival 2015. Hi, right, folks, John Cordisco here. Last round, round 10 of the Gibraltar Chess Festival, the Masters section. Between the tournament leader, Carl Nakamura from the United States and Pintala Hare Krishna as black from India. Pintala's number two rated in India, of course, fishing on number one. He's rated over 2,700, so Pintala is a damn good player. Carl's in first place by a half a point. 
Let's see how he does here. It's going to be a Queens Indian. I kind of blew it at the beginning of this video when I showed the standings, so you pretty much know what happens. But B6, G3, Bishop A6, Queen C2 to guard the C4 pawn, Bishop back. Interesting, though. I'm not sure if that's a proper move or not, to be honest with you. I'll move the bishop again. But that's when Vitala decided. Carl goes bishop g2. c4 and d5. Here we go. Open it right up. E takes, c takes, knight takes, castles. Yeah, technically black's a pawn up, but white's got some pretty good activity. Uh, black's not castle yet. Two minor pieces not developed. Knight c6. Rook d1. Bishop b7. I'm sure this is all book. Carl moves the queen again to a4. Knight f6. Now, it's interesting on my computer off screen, it says knight to f6 is the last book move. So, <laughs> that being a pawn down, obviously, is theory. Knight to h4. Castles. Knight f5. Good spot for that knight. Where's the bishop going to go? What to do? What to do? d5. Knight c3. Develop the other knight. Knight d4. Patala comes right up. Knight takes. C takes. Rook takes. Rook e8. Now obviously that's all pretty much a line they all know. Queen takes. Rook takes. Tight advantage for white. Not the most exciting game in the world. The only thing I can think of that's really good for white here is the isolated pawn for black on d5. They both had the bishop pair. If you're wondering what would happen if knight had taken instead, the bishop takes rook d8. And then bishop b3, and that's a huge advantage for white. Rook takes rook d1. Bishop b4. Doesn't want to bust up his pawns, but bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. Now you're back being down a pawn again. But these guys all know this. I mean, they've seen it probably, I'm sure, in their games that they played as well as their preparation. Girl hits the rook. Rook goes back to e6. Looks like black wants to double up on the e-file. Bishop takes, rook takes. Bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. Now, here we go, folks. Unfortunately, it's not a very exciting game. I wish it was a little better. G6. Rook A to D1. Rook C6. They're going to move around the rooks for a while. Takes. Now, we double up on the 7th rank. Could prove uh, fatal. But rook to f8 cures that. Rook takes b5. Rook b4. h4. h5. King g2. King g7. Rook a5. There'll be a lot of maneuvering in these double double rooks. Rook takes. Rook takes. Rook a7. White's up a pawn. Now, my understanding is this is a theoretical draw because of the fact that White's rook is in front of the pawn and not behind it. King to f6. Here comes the king. a4. Rook a2. Rook a8. Now, Nakamura's been watching the other game. Right next to him, the Huey E. Fon, David Howe game. And I'm sure he sees that David struggling. But still, a Carl just keeps pushing. This is, a, this is a theoretical draw. Sorry about that. Lost my place. A5. We're going to go through it fairly quickly here. Show you what he does. It's a lot of maneuverings. Taking forever. King F2. He decides to keep his king, uh, White does, on the side with his pawns. Because what would happen is, if this king marched down, 
if he has to give up the rest for the pawn, Black's going to pick up these pawns in the meantime, and it's going to be three against two, which could draw as well. Knight f6. Now, they gave Akaro a question mark on this move, and frankly, I don't see how that's that big of a deal. Pawn takes, pawn takes. King e2, they said, was a suggested move. I don't see what the hell the difference is, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's not the greatest move, but it's not the end of the world either. Rook. Rook takes. Rook takes. We did was he traded one pawn on one side for the other. Now it's two against one, but they're they're disconnected. And we're going to go through the next few moves here. They go on for a little bit more. King g3. King g6. Rook, bishop 6, check. F6. They're just slowly creeping up the board. He wants to move the pawn up. King comes back. Checks. King. F4. F, king f5. King takes. King takes. Looks promising, but it's not. But I'll tell you, one miscue by black and it's over. King h6. Rook. Rook. And they go back and forth a little bit here. And there it is. Down to bear kings. Can't get much trouble than that. Yeah. Uh, Carl kept playing. He won the tournament. He knew David Howe drew. David Howe really, really buckled down and dug in and pulled off a draw. But that's a Carl spirit. He wants to win. I don't blame him a bit. It was a game that he couldn't lose. So if your only two results for you are either a draw or a win, you keep going. Why not? Anyway, folks, that's the last game. Round 10 from the Gibraltar chess festival the master section i think one of the coolest open tournaments in the world all kinds of uh, younger people and uh, older people and veterans and oh, a lot of women oh, it's big for women they have a lot of good women's prizes which is nothing but good gosh i wish in the top 30 in the world 10 of them were women that would be a lot better but they're coming you know they're getting their chances uh, through schools and through chess organizations and chess federations in the world not just russia and eastern europe but they're starting to come up anyway folks congratulations to carl nakamura my compadre from the united states on winning the gibraltar chess festival the master section i believe picked up twenty thousand dollars or twenty thousand pounds i'm not sure what the exchange rate is anymore it's probably a little bit higher in u.s dollars so a Carl is going to be playing soon. I uh, just want to mention we're looking for a Carl if you're from the United States in the Grand Prix series that's coming up this spring, the next couple of months. It's the qualifications for the candidates final. Carl's never been in the candidates final, and I think if he's got a shot, this is it. Maybe not forever, but this is his best shot, and I wish him well. Anyway, folks, that settles or finishes, I should say, the Gibraltar Chess Festival coverage. I hope you enjoyed it all. Please watch the other games. There's quite a few of them. And as I always say, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.